afternoon to learn more about the activity feed in Classflow. It's one of my favorite features, and um, I'm not so sure that teachers use it to all of its abilities. So I hope today you walk away with not only how to use it, but some ideas of how you can use it um, with your students, not only how to navigate it, okay? So first we'll handle a couple of um, housekeeping things. Um, first of all, make sure you're connected to the sound. We talked about that a uh, little bit already. Um, the next thing is if you have any questions or need help with anything, please use the WebEx chat. Um, I am doing this webinar on my own, so I will try to track that chat um, as often as possible. Uh, you might see little boxes pop up on my screen and that's when I'm checking it. So, um, but I would love to have any questions or ideas you have, right? The other thing is, is that this session is being recorded. I started the recorder already. Um, that is because you will receive an email of today's session and a YouTube playlist of resources that go along with it um, in a couple of days, okay? This will also be put on the Classflow YouTube channel, um, so you can share the link with uh, friends. So let's go ahead and get started then. Today we are going to be talking about the new activity feed in Classflow. Uh, the things that we're gonna cover are the features of the feed, how to create posts, <coughs> student, uh, the student view of what it looks like and what students can do in it. And then of course, where you can get help and support because Classflow has the best help and support um, out there. Most importantly, and it's not written here, I hope you walk away with a lot of good ideas for actual integration into your curriculum. Okay. So my name is Jennifer Dingle. I am a Classflow instructional consultant. I work exclusively with Baltimore County in Maryland. Um, I was a Baltimore County um, teacher for 14 years. I taught pre-K, first grade, fifth grade. I was a technology integration teacher and I was a stat teacher, which is like an instructional coach. Um, I've been an instructional consultant. This is my second year and I am loving it. Um, I am on Twitter. So if you wanna you know, see some cool things about Classical, you can follow me at Dingle J Dingle. I'd love to have more people follow me, All right? All right, we'll go back to that help in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm gonna go back to my um, homepage in Classflow. So I've already logged into my account. I have everything up and ready to go. So today we're gonna to be talking about uh, the activity feed. And where you go to find the activity feed is in the classes tab on the um, navigation bar. So when I click on that classes tab, I will see my feed in the middle. Now I use my feed all the time, so you're gonna see things here. For example, here is that lesson you were just looking at. Now the one thing you need to know about the feed is in order to do all of the really cool things I'm gonna show you today of interacting with your students, you need to um, have a roster class, okay? And I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but you need to have a roster class. Now, if you don't have a roster class and you do things to open class, your feed is still going to be where all of your lessons that you deliver, you can see this one with the open class, and um, these are to work actual classes, but if you, here's more open class. You see your poll results show up here. So those things are still gonna show up in your feed if you don't have roster classes, right? Now, the feed is so much more powerful if you do have those classes. So what um, I'm gonna show you is how you can create a class, okay? Um, right in the classes tab, you will see one that says add class. And I'm gonna pop over to my other account real quick, just so, cause I wanna show you some, another feature. Um, if I click on that blue new button, I get add a class. And if I click on that class, I can give my class a name, I can select the subject if I want, the grade level if I want, and then I can decide if I want a student-generated class or a teacher-generated class, okay? Student-generated class is our most popular, and you can see why, because you get a lot more features um, when you do that student-generated class. So I highly uh, suggest doing that. It's very easy to do. Another thing you can do is if you already have 
classes in Google Classroom, you can import those into Classflow. So, you know, as teachers, we never have enough time to get everything done, so that's a really awesome way to do that as well. The third way is some districts have special Classflow accounts. For example, Baltimore County has their own tenants. There, it has the BCPS at the beginning of the class flow, and their classes are already rostered for them at the beginning of the year. So those are the three different ways that you can get classes in there. I'm going to go ahead and just look at my chat real quick and make sure we don't have any questions and we seem to be okay. So I'm going to keep going. All right, now, when I'm in my feed right here and I I'm on my feed. You can see there's this nice little home right here to remind you how to get back there, back home. You can see that I have all of my classes here. I have my open class, my awesome class. I think those are the only two I've delivered to. So they will all show up here. Now, if I want to narrow it down, and only, I don't want that open class information to be in there, I can go ahead and just click on my awesome class. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of any other class except for my awesome class. So now you can see that I only see my awesome class. All right? So again, that feed shows anything that you have done to get connected with your class. So for example, this was an assessment that I gave my students. And my students can't see this. You can't share assessment results with them. So just because it shows up on my feed, for example, this lesson, it is not going to show up on the student feed. And I'll show you that in just one second. So right here you can see I have my assessment, I have my lesson, I have an assignment there. So when I go over to my student view and I go to my classes, uh-oh, one second. All right, hold on. I had it all ready for you guys. Let me log back into my student. I didn't even have to log in. Just refresh. Refresh is your friend. You can see that the only thing that the student sees is the assignment that is right here. When you deliver assignments to students, they will automatically show up in their feed, which I love because they don't have to go looking for them. I'm going to go ahead and toggle back to my teacher view. And you saw that these ones did not come up for the student. Students can also isolate their feed by class if they would like the same way the teacher does, okay? Now, in class flow activity feeds, I have an area right here where I can type a message, I can select who I send it to, um, I can attach class flow resources, I also can do a web URL, I can um, upload information from my computer, I also can um, look at results or polls that have come in. So I can go ahead and click on that and I can see those results. It'll take me right into there. I also have the option when there are poll results. In there, my poll results disappeared. If there are poll results, you can do the same thing. You can go ahead and click on them and then um, you would be, here they are, you would be able to click on them and then you would be able to view them, okay? You also have the option in the feed to click and go to the results viewer, which would allow you to see um, which student said what, because when you just preview the results, you can't show and hide names, okay? But all of those things are right in here. If I click on one of my lessons, it will take me right into the um, edit, the lesson builder so I could change things about it if I wanted, okay? I also can see I have a little icon right here. This means it is only shared with me, only I can see it. You'll see in a little bit what happens when I share it with my class. You also at any time can delete um, anything that's in there. So if I wanna delete this one, it will ask me, am I sure I wanna do that? Because it'll say anyone, if it was in anyone else's feed, it would get removed from their feed as well. So if you share something with students and then um, you delete it, they would not have access to that anymore unless they save it to their resources, okay? So I'll go ahead and delete that and you'll see that it will go away. 
Okay. The other thing that you can do is that you can, your feed can get very full, especially if you are using um, Classflow with multiple classes. So one of the really cool features is right here is a search. So I can go ahead and I can search for just a recipient or I could search for a certain person if I wanted to. So one of my students is Donald Duck. So I could search for posts just from that. But from them. Right now, there aren't any in there, but there will be in just a little bit, okay? Let me stop before I start actually sharing some ideas for how you can use this with students and see if there are any questions. All right, you seem to be good. Ask questions if you have them. So let's go ahead and get started with the good stuff, the integration um, for how you can use this with your students. So the first thing you can do is you can do a message to your entire class. So I can go ahead, and this could be anything from giving them the syllabus at the beginning of the semester to giving them a reminder about something, a field trip form, a discussion question you want them to answer, any of those things would be appropriate for um, your feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't forget to bring your, sorry, signed field trip form tomorrow, okay? And then I can attach that file. So I have that saved on my computer and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on, let me do it again a little bit slower. I'm gonna click on this one right here, that's the upload from your computer. So I'll go ahead and click on that and it'll take me directly to my computer and you're seeing my family photos um, in the document. And here's my field trip slip right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that and what you will see happen is that it will load right here, okay? And I can go ahead and I'm going to send this to my entire class because they all have to bring it back um, tomorrow, and I'm actually gonna give that to my homeroom class too. I can give it to both, okay? And I can go ahead and I can post that. Now, when I go, you see it posts right away, and you'll see this is what I was talking about, how the little icon changes from just one guy to, um, you know, a group of people. So if I toggle back to my student view and I refresh my page, you will see that the student gets that right here on their form. And I can go ahead and click on that and it will download it right away for them. And it downloads it automatically into downloads and then they could click on it and they could look at it, right? Or they could print it out or do whatever they need it, okay? They also could add this to their resources. I'm not sure why they would wanna add this particular one, but they could if they wanted. They also could make a comment. So the student could say, already, Mine in. Okay, and you know, kids love to put the little emojis in there too. So we'll go ahead and comment, and you'll see that that student commented here. And when I go back to my teacher view, when I refresh, and I usually just click on another page and back onto classes, you can see that that student said that. Okay, now Donald Duck did a great job and he wrote something appropriate. Right, and I could comment to him and say, awesome job, right, and then comment. And then when I go back to my student view, you will see that that student com the teacher's comment would be there as well, so that we could have a conversation. Now, the one thing that's really great is let's say that Donald Duck writes something or your student writes something and it is not appropriate, right? And he writes it and then he's like, oh, I shouldn't have written that. And he deletes it. When I go back to my teacher view and I look, it will be grayed out just like this and it will tell me that the student deleted it. So it gives a lot of accountability uh, for those students. The other thing you could do is if the student wouldn't have deleted it, I would be able to actually delete it by clicking on that trash can and then it's not there anymore, okay? 
All right, are there any questions before we go to the next idea? Okay, so another way that you can use the feed is you know that you always have students who are absent, right? And they're like, what did I miss? What? I don't know what I missed. I need to see the work that we did. So a really cool thing you can do in the feed is you can take a lesson that you have already delivered to students. So for example, I delivered this um, earlier today and I noticed that Donald Duck was missing. Um, we're just sticking with this same student to keep it easier, but I can go ahead and I can click up here and I can decide that I want to share that with the whole class, right? So maybe I want them to have it for review. I want everyone to have access to it for review. So I could share it with the whole class. If I want to share it with just um, Donald Duck, I can come right up here and I can click on my resources to add a resource. And let me do it again. I always do it so fast because I know what I'm doing. So right here, this little paper clip is how you add Classflow resources. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And right here, I will be able to scroll and I will be able to find that activity right here. And I can go ahead and click on that and say attach. I can type my information here. All right, and I can click right here. And you'll notice that only my classes come up here, but earlier you saw me, if I just type in Donald Duck, I can go ahead and type in that student's name and I can post it, okay? And when I post that, you'll see right here that it only goes to Donald Duck, to so that one student that I selected. So this is a really awesome way to differentiate content that you're sending to students, to do individualized learning for students, um, maybe you have a student that is um, really excelling and needs, you know, something extra to do. Uh, maybe they're going to do a research project um, or something like that. You can do that through here, which is really powerful. So you'll see when I go to my student view, it will be right here, right? Now, since I posted this just to Donald Duck um, and he posts back, only I will see it as the teacher. No one else is in the class is going to see that conversation between the two of us. Only, only he is. Only, you know, the student and myself are, okay? So that's another way is sending um, individual things to students, for example, when they're absent, right? Another way that you can use the feed in Classflow is for um, differentiating content, like I said, you can differentiate to individual students, but you also can differentiate to pre-made groups. So I don't know if you know this or not in Classflow, but you can make um, groups within your class. So I'll show you really quickly. I'm not actually going to make a group, but this class has a group in it. So if you want to make a group, you can see I have my phonics groups here. If you want to make a group, you would just go to the class you want to make the group in and go to add a group. Um, if you want more on how to do that, you can check out the um, Classflow YouTube channel, the help articles. I'll show you where to get all that later, okay? But you can create those groups. So I have pre-made groups here, and I want to differentiate um, some activities that I'm going to give to my students. So I'm going to go ahead and say, play this activity. And let me know you completed it, okay? So this time, instead of doing a class or a student, I'm going to go ahead and I have to type my, um, my group. So I'm going to go ahead and type my group right there, and I'm going to go ahead and post that. Oh, do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add my, my activity there. So give me one second, no big deal, because guess what I can do? I can come right here and I can go ahead and edit that post. So I can go ahead and edit, edit that. And I have the same options that I did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little um, paper clip because that will let me find my activity. And here's my activity. And I'll go ahead and attach it. And then I will 
post this to the student. So don't worry if you mess up like I just did. Um, and I didn't do it on purpose, but um, it was a good call anyways. So you can go ahead and do that. And then when the student gets it, each group of students or each individual student would get their own differentiated activity. Now, if you've never built activities in Classflow, they are so awesome. They're so easy to make. They're kind of like got buckets and containers in Active Insider, but you don't have to do all that programming. The computer does it for you. But one of the awesome things is when you put an activity in the feed, the students are able to play that activity right within their feed. All they have to do is click on it, and then they would be able to play that. And if you don't know much about activities, they are self-checking. So they're great for um, reinforcement, practice, introduction to a topic, right? And after I play, I can say, I got one wrong, or whatever I wanted to say, and then I can comment, okay? And that comment would go to my teacher. Now, anybody in that green group is going to be able to see um, that comment. So it's not just to the teacher, it's to everybody within that group. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and stop for a minute and just see if there are any questions. All right. I don't see any coming in. Hope you guys are taking notes and getting some good ideas for the activity feed. All right. So I have a couple more examples. So another example of how you can use the feed is um, let's say you want your students to uh, review materials, right? You want them to, uh, you talked about um, the Civil War in class, and you want them to review that information, okay? So I can tell them, I just go. Okay, so I have this, and I can decide who I send it to. I'm going to send it to my entire class because. I want everyone to review it. And I'm gonna go ahead to this one right here because I have them saved in my resources. Now, this is really cool because these two resources right here, I actually got from the marketplace. Um, so I was able to really easily just grab them from the marketplace and they had to do exactly with what we were looking and met our standards. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, attach. You attach one at a time, so I'll attach it. One was a PowerPoint, and the other one, I will go ahead and attach that, is a website, right? So I didn't even have to go and find that website. It's already there. So I'm going to go ahead and post it to my student. And you can see that it says one more attachment right here, so then they can see both of them. I'm going to toggle to my student view. And I'm going to refresh my page. And I can see right here that... My website is going to pop up like this, and I can just click on it, and it will open that website in another tab so my students can read um, whatever it is that's on that website. And then there also is um, this one right here where I, if you, it's a PowerPoint. I'm not sure why it says unknown, but it's a PowerPoint, and you can see that it downloaded right down here. And then I could click on that and open it, and I could review that PowerPoint. Maybe the teacher, I don't want them to only review it. I want them to comment on one thing that they learned. And I didn't put that here, but the student could say, I learned. And then what's going to happen is all of your students are going to be commenting here on things that they learned. And then you're going to have a whole class list when all students respond of all these really, really cool facts about the Civil War. So they might have noticed something that someone else didn't. So students are learning from each other, which is really, really powerful. Um, the teacher doesn't have to be the only one that is teaching things to students, okay? All right, another um, idea that's kind of like this one is um, flipped instruction is really, really popular right now. So you can flip your instruction, and I could say, watch this video tonight. And right 
okay, a question you have below. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I have a YouTube video here that we're learning about gravity. And I'm going to go ahead to my class and I'm going to go to right here where it's attach a link. And right here it says web URL. So I'm going to go there and I can put this here and I can type uh, gravity, right? Because that's what it's about. And then I'll attach that. And it's going to show up just like the one I got from Marketplace It. And it's going to work the same way that when students click on it, it's going to open in a new tab and they would be able to watch that video. Now, be careful because if your district um, blocks YouTube, I know Baltimore County does, um, the doing it through the feed is not going to unblock it. Like, it's still going to be blocked for students because it's still directing directly to YouTube. So make sure that you're using sites that you know um, your students will have access to because the filter is still the filter. Okay? All right. Any questions before I share my last idea that I have? Okay. We seem ready to go. All right. This last one is one of my favorites because it allows students to create their own work, which is really, really powerful. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say um, uh, your uh, template below for your passion project. So my students are going to be doing a passion project, right, to help teach them researching skills and for them to really be invested in it. And my whole class is going to do this. And what I want to do is I've made a template that I want my students to use for their passion project. So I already have that made um, and it's saved within my resources. So the same way I got all those things, I can go ahead and click there and I can attach it, right? Um, let me add some details. Save to your resources and edit, and then we send to me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and post this. And this is very similar to what you can do with assignments, if you're familiar with assignments in Classflow. Um, teachers I work with are always looking for ways to do independent, uh, have their students do independent work uh, to show what they know. So we're always trying to come up with creative ways to do that. So what I can do is when I send it to a student like this, students also have options. Not only can they comment, but they also can click on these three little dots and they can preview it, which we saw with the um, activity, or they can add to resources. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my resources. Now, depending on how big the file is, is going to depend how long it takes. Um, to add to their resources. So when I go to their resources, you can see here is that uh, right here. It just jumps right in the main part of resources. They can move it into their classes if they want, but they don't have to, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, you would have to show your students how to do this, but they could edit that lesson. It will take them into the lesson builder, which looks exactly um, like it does for uh, teachers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll put my name at the top. That might be one of my directions I have for my students. And you can see this is just a template that wants them to put facts and then their resources that are used, right? So I'll go ahead and just draw a smiley face here. So when I submit it back to my teacher, you can see that, all right? The awesome thing about this is it saves automatically. Um, I used to have to teach kids how to save documents places and they Nine out of ten times, a student would save it and have no idea where it was, and they would come back the next day to finish, and they wouldn't be able to, okay? So they'll finish that, right, right here. And then what they can do is, I'm all done with it. I'm going to go back to my classes, and what I can do as a student is I can send messages directly to my teacher, right? So I can go and say, here is my passion project. Okay, and then they can select a teacher. Now, the really cool thing is, is that they can only send messages to teachers. There is not a way for students to interact with each other um, 
individually. They can only send messages to the teacher. So I'm going to go ahead and send that. And then just like the teacher, they can attach their resources. They can attach websites. They can attach um, documents from their computer just like a teacher can. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, and I'm going to click on that that I want to send to my teacher, and I'll go ahead and send it, and then I will post it. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my uh, teacher view, and I have to refresh my page. You have to refresh to get your feed to refresh. Okay, and you can see here is that students work. And as a teacher, I can click on it and I can preview it. Get back there, okay. I also, oh, keep clicking on it. Give me one sec. I also can download it. So if the student did it, so there would be, um, there would be um, polls maybe when they presented they wanted to use with students. They could do that. Um, I could do that by downloading it to my account and then the teacher can deliver it to the class um, for the student, which is really, really powerful too. Um, one of the other really cool things that students can do is they can create their own activities. Um, a lot of teachers tell me that the activities are, you know, lower on the Bloom's taxonomy. They're just memory and practice. Um, but think about how powerful it is if students are creating their own word search or if they're creating um, their own matching game. Um, it's really, really powerful stuff. And the activities are so easy to make that the students can definitely, definitely do it. Okay. So let me stop for a second and see if there are any questions because I've given tons of information. Right. Oh, yay, Peggy, I'm glad you like that idea. Integration is my jam. I love it. Um, and I love all that Classical has to offer and all the different ways you can use it. This is just the feed um, we're talking about here, which is super exciting. Okay, so really quickly, let's just review the posts really quick. Um, so students can create posts, right, and have attachments, which we talked about. Now, there are some limitations. One, student posts are sent only directly to a single teacher, right, associated with that class. Um, they don't have the option to edit a post like a teacher does. Um, and teacher, uh, students can delete their posts, but remember, teachers are still going to be able to see all of those deleted posts, okay? until they delete it. Um, let's look at the difference between comments between teachers and students. Um, teachers can comment on any post as well as any post made by students, right? Students can only comment on posts made by the teacher that is associated with them, all right? Um, teachers can edit their comments. Students um, can't edit. And they can only post on, or they can only comment on posts that were sent to them by the teacher, okay? Um, teachers can delete anything as well as um, delete student posts on anything. Um, and students, again, can delete their comments, but teachers will still see them, which I think is great for the accountability piece, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. So let me go really quickly back to the lesson that I started on. There we are. Okay. Just a couple things to wrap up. Open my toggle carousel so I can get to where I need to be. All right, so um, never fear, help is near. And I mentioned this at the beginning that the class will help is amazing, amazing. Um, there is this little icon right here. You can't see it in the delivery mode, but when you're not in delivery mode, it's up in the upper right-hand side. You can go ahead and click on that, um, and you can start a conversation with the support team. And their response time during the day is, I think, less than five minutes right now, which is amazing. The other thing is you don't have to be in Classflow to get their response. You also will get an email because your Classflow account is connected to your email. So that's amazing. The other thing is you have this little arrow right here. If you click on that, 
there is a drop down menu of short one minute videos. Um, they change depending on where you are in class flow. So um, if you're near the feed, they'll have feed things there, right? Um, there also is in that drop down menu a, it says help, and there you can, you are taken to an outside um, help support site where you can actually search for articles, which is very, very helpful as well. Um, the, I think there's the last, the, the last thing we're going to talk about is get social with us. Like I said, um, I share tons of stuff on um, Twitter about it, but we have a class little Facebook page. We have Twitter. We have Instagram. Um, tag us. Like us. Share what you're doing with Classflow. Um, I kind of stalked that page. Uh, I said integration is my jam, so I'm always looking for new ways that teachers are using Classflow. So please share. You're helping me. Um, and besides that, um, are there any questions? Okay. I'll stay on for a couple of minutes. Yes, Peggy, they are very quick with answers, uh, the support, definitely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, but I am going to stay on for a couple of minutes if you have any questions. I hope you walked away with some ways to use the feed uh, with your students. And thank you so much for joining me this afternoon, and have a great rest of the week.